when you observe yourself within, you see moving images, a world of images, uh, generally known as fantasies. is already there. You see, the child is not born tabula rasa, as one assumes. The child is born as a high complexity with existing determinants that never waver through the whole life and that give the child its char his character already in the earliest childhood. A mother recognizes the in an individuality of her child. And and so if you observe carefully, you see the tremendous difference, even in, in very small children. And these peculiarities express themselves in every way. So it, first the peculiarities express, express themselves in, in all childish activities, in the way how it plays, in the things it is interested in. There are children who are tremendously interested in all moving things and in movement chiefly. All the things you see that affect the body. And so they are interested in what the eyes do, what the ears do, how, uh, how far you can bore into the nose with your finger, yeah. you know. <laughs> okay. Now you see these things, uh, these interests uh, express themselves in a typically childish way in, chi in children, and later on they express themselves in other peculiarities which are still the same, but it doesn't come from the fact that they once have done such and such a thing in, in childhood. It is the character that is doing it. There is, there is a, a definite inherited complexity. You see, we are born into a, into a pattern. We are a pattern. We are a, stru a structure that is pre-established through the genes. It is a, a biological order of our mental functioning. Uh, as, for instance, our biological or physiological function uh, follows a pattern. Or the behavior of any bird or insect follows a pattern. And that is the same with us. The, the, uh, man has a certain pattern uh, that is, makes him specifically human, and no, no man is born without it. We are only deeply unconscious of these facts because we live all by our, our senses and outside of ourselves. If, if a man could look into it himself, he would discover it. And when a man discovers it, in our days, he thinks he's crazy. And he may be crazy.
means an amazing knowledge of themselves, of the things that go on in themselves. But even those people wouldn't be uh, capable of knowing what is going on in their own cultures. For instance, they are not conscious of the fact that while they live a conscious life, all the time a myth is played in the unconscious. A myth that extends over centuries. Namely, uh, uh, archetypal ideas, a stream of archetypal ideas that goes on through one individual, through the centuries. You see, it, 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 it is like a continuous stream. And that comes then to the daylight in the great movements. Say, in, in political movements or in uh, spiritual movements. Um, for instance, in the time before Reformation, uh, people dreamt of the great change. And that's the reason why uh, such great transformations could be predicted. Uh, if uh, somebody has been clever enough to see what there is going on in people's mind, in the unconscious mind, uh, uh, would be able to predict it. For instance, I have predicted the Nazi rising in Germany uh, through the observation of my German patients. They had dreams in which the whole thing was anticipated. Uh, and, and with considerable detail in, in, in the years before Hitler, before Hitler came in the beginning of the, well, I could, uh, could say the year, in the year 1919, I was sure that something was threatening in Germany, something mm -hmm. very big and very catastrophic. Mm -hmm. And I only knew it through the, through the observation of the, of, of the, of the unconscious. When you observe the world, you see people, you see houses, you see the sky, uh, you see tangible objects. But when you observe yourself within, you see moving images, a world of images, uh, generally known as fantasies. Uh, yet these uh, fantasies are facts. You see, it is a fact that a man has such and such a fantasy. And it is such a tangible fact, for instance, that when a man has a certain fantasy, uh, another man may lose his life. Or uh, a bridge is built. These houses were all fantasies. Everything you do here, all of right. houses, everything was fantasy to begin with. And fantasy has a proper reality. It is, that is not to be forgotten. Fantasy is not nothing. It is, of course, not a tangible object. But it is a fact, nevertheless. It is, uh, uh, see, a form of energy. Oh, uh, despite the fact we can't measure it. it. It is a manifestation of something. And that is a reality. That is just uh, uh, a reality as, for instance, the peace treaty of Versailles or something like that. Yeah. It is no more. You can't show it. But it, 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 it has been a fact. And, and so uh, the, the psychical events are facts, are realities. And when you observe the stream of images within, you observe an aspect of the world, of the world within. And so, you see, the man who is going by the external world, by the influences of the external world, say, society, or perceptions, uh, sense perceptions, thinks that he, he is more valid, you know, because this is valid, this is real. And the man who goes by the subjective factor is not valid because subjective factor is nothing. Yeah. No, that man is just as well based because he is based, bases himself upon uh, the world from within. And so he is quite right, even if he says, oh, there is nothing but my fantasy, you know. And of course, that is the introvert. And that's the introvert is always afraid of the external world. He will tell you, when you ask him, he will be apologetic about it. He will say, of course, yes, I know, it's only my fantasies. And, 
uh, anti has always resentment. And as the world in general, particularly America, is extroverted like hell, <laughs> uh, the, the, the introvert has no place. He, he, because he doesn't know that he beholds the world from within. And that gives him dignity, and that gives him certainty, because it is, nowadays particularly, the, the world hangs on a thin thread. And that is the psyche of man. Assume that uh, certain fellows in Moscow lose their nerve or their uh, common sense uh, for a bit. And uh, the whole world is in fire and, and, and flames. It is, nowadays we are not threatened by elementary catastrophes. There is no such thing as an age bomb. That is all man's doing. We are the great danger. The psyche is the great danger. What if something goes wrong with the psyche? You see? And uh, so you see, it is, it is demonstrated to us in our days what, what the power of the psyche is of man. How important it is to know something about it. But we know nothing about it. Man is born with a certain functioning. A certain way of functioning, a certain pattern of behavior. And uh, that is expressed uh, in the form of archetypal images or archetypal forms. For instance, the way in which a man should behave is given by an archetype. And therefore, you see, the primitives tell such stories. Uh, a great deal of education goes through storytelling. You see, if you are unconscious, in, uh, about certain things that ought to be conscious, then you are dissociated. Yes. And then you are uh, a man whose uh, uh, left hand never knows what the right is doing and counteracts or interferes with the right hand. Now, such a man is hampered all over the place. Yes. American life is in a subtle way so one-sided and so deracinated, uprooted, that you must have something to compensate uh, the earth you see, that you have to, to, to pacify your unconscious all along the line because it is in absolute uproar. Yeah. So at the slightest provocation, uh, you have a, a bit of moral rebellion in America. Look at the, at the, the rebellion of, of modern youth in, in, in America. Yeah. The sexual rebellion and all that. Because yeah. the, 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 the real natural man uh, is just in open rebellion against the utterly inhuman uh, 
form of life. They are absolutely divorced, you know, from, uh, from, from nature, in a way. And, and that accounts for these, the, that, that drug abuse. Um, I noticed uh, with my uh, patients, particularly with uh, people that are in, uh, in public life, that they have a certain way of uh, presenting themselves. Uh, for instance, take the doctor. He uh, has a, a certain way, for instance, he has good bedside manners. And, and uh, uh, he behaves as one as expects a doctor behaves. He may even identify himself with it and, uh, and believe that he is what he appears to be. And so when he's a professor, he's also supposed to behave in a certain way so that it is plausible that he is a professor, you know. Uh, so the persona is a certain, certain complicated system of behavior which is partially dictated by society and partially dictated by the expectations or the wishes uh, one nurses oneself. Uh, now, this is not the real personality, in spite of the fact that people will assure you that it, that is all quite real and uh, quite honest, yet it is not. Now, uh, such a uh, performance or, uh, say, yeah, the, the performance of the, uh, of the persona uh, is quite all right, as long as you know that you are not identical with the way in which you appear. But uh, if you are unconscious of this fact, then you get into uh, sometimes very disagreeable conflicts. Namely, people will uh, can't help noticing that at home, for instance, you are quite different from what you appear to be in public. And people who don't know it uh, stumble over it in the end. Uh, they deny that they are like that. But they are like that. They yeah. are it. And then you don't know, now, which is the real man? Is he the man as he is at home or in intimate relations? Or is he uh, the man that appears in public? It is a question of Jekyll and Hyde. Often. Yeah. It is such, uh, uh, occasionally there is such a difference that you would almost be uh, able to speak of uh, the uh, double personality. And the more that is pronounced, the more people, uh, people are neurotic. They get neurotic because they have two different ways. They are, contradict themselves all the time. And in as, in as much as they are unconscious of themselves, they don't know it. They think they're all one. Everybody sees that they are two. And some know him only from one side, so others know him only from the other side. And then there are situations that clash because the way you are creates certain situations in, with people in your relations and these, these two situations don't chime in, they, they are just dissonances. When you take a singer yes. who is absolutely uh, uh, controlling his voice, suddenly he can't sing. Or uh, any other, uh, for take uh, a man who writes uh, uh, fluently, uh, suddenly he makes a ridiculous mistake. But there his habit doesn't function. It may be, you know, that what the unconscious has to say is so disagreeable that one prefers not to listen. And in, in most cases, uh, uh, people would be probably less neurotic if they could admit the, the things, because these things are are always a bit difficult or, or yeah. disagreeable or uh, inconvenient or something yeah. of the sort. So there is always a certain amount of repression. When in treatment, for instance, in the treatment of neurosis, you have to do with that personal unconscious for quite a while. And then only uh, dreams come that show that the collective unconscious is touched upon. Yes. Now, as long as uh, the, uh, there uh, is material uh, for personal nature, you have to deal with the personal unconscious. But when you get to, uh, uh, say, to a question 
um, of your problem, which is no more merely personal, but also collective. You get collective dreams.
there is no system about it in therapy. In therapy, you, you treat the patient as he is in the present moment. You know. Uh, irrespective of causes and, and, and such things, that is all more or less theoretical. Um, there, are, there are cases who know just as much about their own neurosis as I know about it, in a way. Uh, in, in such cases, I can start right away with uh, posing the problem. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, there is a case, a professor of philosophy, and he imagines uh, that he has uh, cancer. She, he shows me uh, uh, several dozen uh, X-ray plates uh, that prove that there is no cancer. And he says, of course I have no cancer, but nevertheless, I'm afraid I could have one. You see, I have consulted so many surgeons, and they all assure me there is none, and I know there is none, but I might have one, you see, and that's enough. Now, uh, you see, such a case can stop from one moment to the other. He simply uh, stops thinking such a foolish thing, I you see. see. But that is exactly what he can do. You know it is nonsense, and why should you think it? Or what for should you think it? Well, and what is that power that makes you think such a thing? It's like a, like a, a possession, you know. Exactly. It's yes. like a demon yes. in him yes. that makes him think like that, in spite of the fact that he doesn't want it. You see, then we have the problem. That is the problem for an intellectual man. And then I say, now, you see, you don't know, you have no answer. I have no answer. Now what are we going to do? I say, now we must see what you dream, because the dream is a manifestation of the unconscious side. Right. Now you never have heard of the unconscious side. So I must explain to him, that he has an unconscious, yes. and that the dream is a manifestation of it, and if we, we succeed in analyzing the dream, we, we, we might get an idea about that power that makes him think like that. You see? Uh, so, uh, in, in such a case, uh, one can begin right away with the analysis of dreams. And in all cases uh, that are a bit serious, Mind you, this is not a simple case, this is a very yes, serious yes. And, and difficult case, uh, in spite of the simplicity of the uh, phenomenology, of the symptomatology. In, in all cases, after uh, 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 the preliminaries, as it were, uh, history of the family, the, the, uh, the medical anamnesis, etc., we come to that question. What is it in your unconscious that makes you wrong? That hinders you to think normally? And then we are uh, there where we can begin with the observation of the unconscious. And then day by day one goes on by the data the unconscious produces. You see, we discuss the dream and that gives a new surface to the whole problem. And he, he will have another dream, and the next dream gives again an answer, because the unconscious is in a compensatory relation to consciousness, and, uh, and after a while we get the full picture. And if he has the full picture, and uh, has the, the necessary moral stamina, uh, well, then he, he can be cured. But in the end, it is a moral question whether a man applies what he had learned or not. Typical uh, archetypal form. It is the what they call in alchemy the quadratura circuli, the square in the in the circle, or the circle in the square. And it, it is uh, an age-old symbol uh, that goes right back in the, in the prehistory of man, and is all over the earth. And uh, it uh, either expresses the, the deity or the self. 
and uh, and these, these two terms are typologically very uh, much related. But which doesn't mean that I believe that God is a self or that that's a self is God. I make that statement that yeah. there is a psychological relation. And that can be, uh, have plenty of evidence for it. And uh, it is a, a very important archetype. It's the archetype of an inner order. Uh, and uh, uh, it is always used in that sense, either to make an, uh, the arrangement, arrangement of the many, many aspects of the universe, uh, a world scheme, or uh, a scheme of uh, uh, our psyche. And uh, it expresses the, the fact that there is a center and a periphery. And, uh, and it tries to embrace the whole. It's a, a, a symbol of wholeness. So you see, uh, in a moment where, uh, say, in a, during a, a, tr a treatment, uh, when there is great disorder and chaos in a man's mind, uh, then this symbol can appear as a, in the form of a mandala in a dream or when he makes imaginary fantastical drawings or yes. something of the sort. Uh, there it spontaneously appears uh, as a compensatory archetype, bringing order, showing the possibility of order. Centeredness. And it means a center which is not coincident with the, with the ego, but with the wholeness, it is wholeness. Yeah. The our wholeness, which I call the self. The yeah. self is the term for wholeness. And and I not whole in my ego. My ego is, is a fragment yes, of fragment. my personality. Oh, yes. So you see, uh, that the center of a mandala is not the ego, it, it is the whole personality. The whole self. The center of the whole personality. And uh, uh, it plays a very great role in the East, for instance. Uh, uh, but in the Middle Ages, equally. Uh, and, and then it, it has been lost, it has been thought of as a mere uh, sort of uh, allegorical uh, decorative uh, motive. But uh, as, uh, as a matter of fact, it is uh, uh, highly important and, and highly autonomous uh, uh, symbol that appears in dreams and, and so on, or in folklore. We usually say that the, the main archetype. I had a, a, a case that was a, an intelligent uh, 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 young woman. She was a, a student of philosophy, very good mind, where one could expect easily that she would see that I am not the, the, the parental authority. But she was utterly unable to, uh, to get out of this delusion. Uh, and in such, in such a case, one, uh, one always has recourse to the dreams. One, it is just as if one would ask the unconscious, now what do you say to such a condition? You see, she says within the unconscious, of course I know you are not my father, but I just feel like that, it is like that, it, it, I depend upon you. And, uh, and I say, now you see what the unconscious says. Now the unconscious produced dreams in, in which I really assumed a very curious role. You know, uh, she was the little infant. She was sitting on my knees. I held her in my arms. I was a very tender father to the little girl, you know. And the last dream of that series was, I cannot tell you all the dreams, was that I uh, uh, was out in nature. I stood in a field of wheat, in an enormous field of wheat that was ripe for house. And I was a giant. And I held her in my arm like a baby. And the wind was blowing over that field of wheat. Now you know when the wind is blowing over wheat field, these waves in the wheat field. Yes, yes. And with these waves, I swayed like that, uh, 
putting her as if it were to sleep, you know. And she, feel, she felt uh, as being in the arms of, a, of, a God, of, of, of the Godhead. And I thought, no, now, now the, the harvest is ripe. And I must tell her. And I told her, you see, what you want and what you project into me, because you are not conscious of it, is you, you, you have the idea of a deity. You don't possess. Therefore, you see it in me. Uh, that clicked. Because, you know, she had a, a, a rather intense uh, religious education. Of course, it all vanished later on. And something disappeared from her world. Her world became merely personal. And, and uh, the, uh, that uh, religious conception of the world was non-existent, apparently. And, so she certainly became aware of an entirely heathenish image uh, that comes fresh from the archetype. She had not the idea of a Christian God uh, or of a uh, Old Testament Yahweh. Uh, it was a heathenish God, you see, a, a, a God of nature, of vegetation. He was the wheat himself, he is the spirit of the wheat, uh, the spirit of the wind. And she was in the arms of that Newman. No. Now, that is the living experience of an archetype. Now, that made a tremendous impression upon that girl. And instantly, it clicked. She saw what she really was missing, that missing value, that, that was, was in the form of a projection in myself and made myself indispensable to her. Yes. Now that is a luminous experience, you see. And, and that is the thing that uh, people are looking for. The, an archetypal experience that gives them uh, 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 an incorruptible value. You see, they depend upon other conditions, they depend upon desi their desires, their ambitions, uh, depend upon other people, because they have no value in themselves. They have nothing in themselves. They are only rational, and, and, and they are not in the possession of a treasure that would make them independent. But when that girl can hold that uh, experience, then she doesn't depend anymore. She cannot depend anymore because that value is in herself. And, and that is a sort of liberation. And that is, of course, uh, makes her complete, you know. Uh, in as much as she can realize such a luminous experience, she is able to continue her path, her way, her individuation. The acorn can become an oak, uh, and, and, and not a donkey. It, uh, it, uh, nature will take uh, uh, her course. Uh, she will become that which she is from the beginning.
it is a, a procedure that has many uh, stages, it uh, or levels. If you treat an ordinary case of uh, neurosis, it 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 may only go as far as healing the symptoms or giving the patient such an attitude that he can deal with his neurosis. Sometimes it takes you a week, sometimes a few days, sometimes it is just one consultation in which I, uh, I clean up a, a case. It, it is of course always the, the question to know where or what. Uh, it needs a good deal of experience, but other cases take very long and you couldn't send them away because they wouldn't. They, they want to know more. They uh, make, uh, 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 well, they, they, they make uh, the whole pros process of development. They, uh, that goes from stage to stage, a widening out of the mental horizon. You, you cannot imagine how one-sided people are in our days. And so, it, 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 it needs no end of work uh, to uh, get people rounded out or mentally more developed, more conscious. And they are so keen on it that for nothing in the world they would quit. And they are not shy of spending money on it. As each plant, each tree grows from a seed and becomes in the end, say, an oak tree, so man becomes what he is meant to be, at least he ought to get there. But most get stuck. They could get much further if they had heard proper things or if they had spent the necessary time on themselves. But this is not popular, you know, to spend time on oneself because our point of view is entirely extroverted. is a pronouncing of series of images that formulate the life of archetypes. And so the statements of every uh, religion, of many uh, uh, poets and so on, are uh, um, statements about the inner uh, um, mythological process, which is a necessity because man is not complete. If he is not conscious of uh, that aspect of things, so you see, a man is not complete when he lives in a world of statistical truth. He must live in a world of his biological truth, that is his biological truth, that is not uh, uh, merely statistics. <laughs> Yet our, our natural science uh, makes everything to an average, reduces everything to an average, and of course <coughs> all the individual qualities are wiped out. 
that, of course, is, is most uh, unbecoming. It is, it is unhygienic. It deprives people of their specific values, where they are individuals. Uh, bec uh, it, takes, it deprives them of the most important experiences of their life, where they experience their own value. The, <coughs> the, the creative background of their personality. And uh, we think we are able to be born today and to live in no myth, in, without history. That's, that's, that is a, a disease. That's absolutely abnormal. Because man is not born every day. He is once born in a, in a specific historical setting with the specific historical qualities and therefore he is only complete when he has a relation to, to these things. It is just as if you were born without eyes and ears uh, when, you are born, when you are growing up with no connection with the past. From the, natural, from the standpoint of natural science, you need no connection with the past. You yeah. can wipe it out. And that is, that is a, a, a mutilation of, of the human being.
Self is merely a term that designates the whole personality. The whole personality of man is indescribable. The, his consciousness can be described. His unconscious cannot be described. Because the unconscious, as I must repeat myself, is always unconscious. And it is really unconscious. It really does not know it. And so we don't know our... Uh, our unconscious personality. We have hints, we have uh, certain ideas, uh, but uh, we don't know it really. Nobody can say where man ends. And that is the, uh, the beauty of it, you know. Yeah. It's, it's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, it, it, the unconscious of man can reach God knows where. There we are going to make discoveries.